Hey there, I'm Helper Wesley, and this video is part two of our platformer example. So in the last video we went over character animations, platforms, the background, and so on. This time around we'll be starting with some basic enemies. So I have a sprite object here, that's a fly. If I put it into the game and then preview the game, you'll see that it's just sitting there. But if I go to behaviors for that object and search for rectangular movement, we can install that behavior. And then when we go down the list of installed behaviors, it'll be there. This behavior can make an object move in a rectangular path. But in this case, we're gonna use it to make the fly go up and down. So we're gonna turn the horizontal speed and distance to zero. And then we're going to give it the shake object behavior. Again, you can find this by searching in new behaviors. And now we can go to the event sheet to make it interactable with the player. So we'll start with a blank event, where if the player is in collision with a fly, and a boolean variable, which is just a true false variable, called dead, of the fly object is false, one time, the fly will be killed, if the player is falling when the collision happens in which case we set the boolean variable to true, and then to make the character bounce off the fly, we add a sub-event with the actions allow player object to jump again, simulate pressing the jump key, and then play the jump sound. And then for the gameplay itself, we can make this add to the score by just making another sub-event and giving it the action change the score by adding 50. And then finally, we're gonna make the fly fall out of the sky by deactivating the rectangular movement behavior, adding a permanent force to the fly to make it fall down, and then use this action from the shake object behavior that we installed to give the fly a little shake as it falls down. But alternatively, if the fly hits you and you're not falling, we'll set the boolean value of the variable dead for the player to true, and that'll be used to trigger the death event made in the last video. And then finally, it's a good practice to get rid of objects that fall out of the screen. So when the fly's Y position is lower than 540, which is the bottom of the screen, we'll delete the fly object. And now to see that in practice, when we jump and land on the fly, because we're falling, it stops its rectangular movement behavior, and then falls at the applied force, and shakes a little bit as it goes down. And then once it goes beyond the screen, it gets deleted. And now if we try that again, but let the fly hit us while we're not falling, we'll die and get sent back to the start. Next, we're going to add in this static creature that catches on fire. So the first thing we'll do is set it to turn its fire on and off based on a timer. So at the beginning of the scene, we'll start the timer called fire of the monster object. So this is an object timer. And then next, if that object timer is above two seconds, Toggle the boolean variable called fire of the monster and reset that timer. Next, to change the animation of that object based on the boolean variable, we'll create two events. The first being if the boolean variable is false, then change the animation to the animation named not fire. And if it's true, set the animation to the animation named fire. And then give both of those events trigger once. And now the enemy will change animations based on that timer going back and forth from being on fire to being not on fire. Next, we'll set up the events for what happens if the player collides with that creature. So if the player is in collision with the monster, trigger once, with a sub-event that the animation of the monster is set to no fire, then we break it up into two sections. One for if the player is falling, so they're falling on top of the monster, do what we did for the fly to allow them to jump again and add to the score, but instead we're going to delete the monster this time and create a particle effect at the center point of the monster. To learn more about particle effects, check out our video on particles. And then the other option is if the player collides with the object and they're not falling, in which case we'll set their boolean variable dead to true, sending them back to the start. And then finally the last option for when the player is in collision with the monster, but their animation is fire, then the player will die regardless of whether or not they're jumping on top of them. And this is what that looks like in practice.
And finally with this, to make these deaths work with the boolean variable, we needed to modify the events from the last video. So now whether the player falls off a cliff, or runs into an enemy, or something else, we can change the boolean variable dead to true, and that will trigger this below event, which will set it back to false, then move them back to the starting position, and play the death sound effect. Hopefully you found this video helpful. We'll be building onto this example in the next video, where we're going to explain a few more things, like the checkpoint system, and whatever else didn't get explained in these first two videos. As always, be sure to comment down below, and tell us what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. I've been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.